All right, great. Um, so uh, I'm glad Todd started talking about how he felt giving this talk, because I'm going to start the same. I don't have any disclosures, but it was about a week ago. I would volunteered a long time ago to speak in a session saying adolescent inguinal hernia mesh or no mesh, and I'm a pediatric surgeon. So um, I realized about a week or so ago that I had signed up for the use mesh session, and this slide shows how I feel. So um, I agree with Todd. I'm a pediatric surgeon, and in pedi when you have the luxury of not operating on big, fat, hairy, smelly adults, an inguinal hernia in a child is a patent processus vaginalis or a patent canal of NUC, and a high ligation works well. Um, however, I'll do anything for sages, so <laughs> I've been involved for about 12 years, and they asked me to talk about why do you use mesh, and so here I am. Now, in kids, there are th a lot of things that we don't do. We don't use staples on the skin, we don't use file language, we try not to use 12 millimeter ports, and we certainly don't need mesh, uh, use mesh for adolescent inguinal hernias or any inguinal hernias in a child. However, this is how the argument goes. So, I've heard Todd debate Mike Rosen on this topic many, many times, and it's very entertaining. And another thing that I really didn't want to do was debate Todd on why we should be using mesh. I feel like the cat with the dogs. But um, here's how the argument usually goes. One, recurrence rates are higher than you think in children. So you're repairing their hernia when they're a child, and we see your patients as adult surgeons later on. You don't see them back, so you don't know how high your recurrence rates are. The second argument is that the disease process is different in infants um, in children than it is in adolescents. Sure, it is a patent process patent processus vaginalis or a patent canal of NUC in a very small child. In an adolescent, it may actually be that bigger hole. Um, the third argument is that adolescents may have increased risk factors for recurrence. So with the obesity epidemic, or in Tennessee, as we call it, biscuit toxicity, more adolescents are obese, more of them may be smoking, and have an increased rate of recurrence. And we've learned that mesh repair in adults decreases your recurrence rates markedly, so that should be true in adolescents. So I think there are a couple of situations where you could consider mesh repair or consider doing something else. Um, one would be large, and if you look at the studies in patients, in children who have had recurrence, a lot of them are gonna have these things. So you could consider doing a mesh repair or doing something else, like a muscle repair, in adolescents who have large hernia defects, in children who are obese, and that tends, obesity tends to be one of the largest risk factors for recurrence. You could consider them for recurrent, recurrent hernias or for in hernias for whatever reason your preferred approach is going to be laparoscopic or preperitoneal, where you're going to want to put something else in there. Um, they can be considered for adolescents or children who may have some increased risk um, for poor wound healing and recurrence, such as folks with con connective tissue disorders or bowel uh, malnutrition and growth failure, or they can be considered in children who may have an increased risk of having increased intra-abdominal pressure after surgery, so your weightlifters, your competitive athletes, or patients who have chronic pulmonary disease or BP shunts. Now, um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of good evidence that would tell you that a mesh repair is better. In fact, there's just not a lot of good comparative evidence. Um, I found one retrospective study which was done at the University of Michigan, and they compared all adolescents and young adults, so individuals who were um, from 12 to 25 years for a primary hernia repair, and they compared um, high ligation done by the high quality pediatric surgeons at the University of Michigan um, with mesh repairs done by uh, the high quality adult surgeons at the University of Michigan. And these um, individuals were uh, contacted by a telephone survey to assess their outcomes as well as all recurrences were uh, confirmed either by reoperation or by imaging. 
And what they found in this study is that there was no statistically significant difference in the recurrence rates. So the recurrence rates was somewhere between, you know, around 6% and slightly higher in the high ligation or mesh repair, but that was not statistically significant. And the complication rate of these two procedures was also uh, statistically identical. Now, there has been, I found one small um, randomized study that compared, th compared 60 patients who were randomized to either the high ligation or a mesh repair with an acellular matrix, and again, the recurrence rates were statistically not different. There was a trend toward recurrence with the high ligation, but that study was only followed, uh, the patients were only followed for less than two years. In this larger retrospective study, the recurrence rates occurred at a median of 3.5 years. So I think what we know, evidence-wise, is recurrence rates are probably higher than we think. Um, but I don't, I think the jury is still out on what the solution to this is. Whether it is that a muscle repair should be added to a high ligation or that mesh actually makes a difference. And um, I am a consumer health informatics researcher when I'm not being a surgeon. And so I'm very excited about hearing what the patient perspective on this debate is.